Hello and welcome to Basic Medical Sciences. In this video, we are going to introduce gram-negative bacteria. Right, so we have finished gram-positive bacteria, most of them. Right, the main uh, difference between these two is because uh, look at the thickness of the peptidoglycan layer. Right, so this is the gram-positive. You can see that it's, it's thick, right? That's why on staining, uh, gram staining, it will stain uh, blue-violet. Right, because it takes up the dye. Right, uh, look at the thickness in gram negative bacteria. There is thin peptidoglycan. Right, so this one it will take up like the second dye which we will use. Like, so at this case it will turn uh, pink or red. Right, so uh, in this in this series i am going to represent gram negative bacteria uh mostly in red or pink background so that you'll be able to differentiate right so this is the uh like uh general classification of gram negative bacteria right so i said uh they stain pink right uh so uh, considering the morphology uh we have a gram negative rods or curved rods uh gram negative bacilli uh, gram negative cocobacilli and gram negative diplococci. Right, so firstly, starting with the curved rods, right, so you will see that these bacteria are oxidase positive and they include uh, Helicobacter pylori, specifically, this one produces ureas. The second one, Vibrocholera, right, Vibrocholeri are the causative agents of, of cholera. Uh, you see that this grows well in alkaline media, right? And in most cases, for example, in crook examinations, they just tell you that uh, it grows uh, in 1% pepton water, right? Uh, then the last one uh, among the gram-negative curved rods is Campylobacter jujuni, right? This one actually grows at 42 degrees Celsius. Now, let's go to the bacilli. Right, so they are classified according to their ability to ferment lactose, right? So we have uh, like uh, lactose positive and lactose negative, right? So these are lactose positive. They are fed, are uh, divided, whether they ferment lactose fast or slow, right? So fast lactose fermenters includes E. coli, Klebsiella, and Enterobacter. Slow lactose fermenters include uh, Citrobacter and Seracia. All right. Okay. That's those which can ferment lactose. All right. So those which cannot ferment lactose, I mean the bacilli, of course, they can be further classified according to whether they have the enzyme oxidase or not. All right. So on oxidase positive, there is Pseudomonas. Pseudomonas is the one which is very important here. Uh, oxidase negative bacteria uh, can be further classified whether they can uh, produce uh, hydrogen sulfide right uh, here uh, so uh, like there are uh, two right uh, the one which can uh, produce hydrogen sulfide is usually uh, salmonella and proteus right and uh, shigella and yesenia right Shige shigella species uh, the causative agents for shigellosis and Yersinia for Yersinia pestis and other species, they cannot, uh, uh, they don't produce hydrogen sulfide, right? Moving on to cocoa bacilli, the most important ones are uh, Haemophilus influenza, Bordetella pertussis, uh, brucellosis, like this one, I mean, the bacteria is called brucella, right? Uh, the disease is brucellosis. And also, we will talk about Francisella churalensis, right? The last group is diplococci, and usually they uh, are aerobes, right? So these ones, are they are classified according to their ability to ferment maltose, right? Uh, so... Neisseria meningitidis, it can ferment maltose, but Neisseria gonorrhea cannot ferment lactose. And another one, which is in the same class as Neisseria gonorrhea, is Moraxella, for Moraxella cataralis. 
right so for now let me just because we are going to start with this diplococci right two of them right so let me just uh introduce like the common features between uh neisseria gonorrhea and neisseria meningitidis okay so firstly uh these are the only pathogenic gram negative cocci right uh neisseria gonorrhea and neisseria meningitidis all right they have oxidase uh, they are oxidase positive. Uh, they have like their special agar for growth, right? So uh, the first one is called chocolate agar, which is simply uh, heated blood. The second one is uh, pear martin, right? Pear martin, this one is more like a selective media, right? It's also known as VPN agar or VCN agar. It just depends with the textbook you are using, right? But what does this VPN stands for? V for vancomycin, which means this one, it will kill all the gram-positive bacteria in that culture. Uh, polymyxin or cholestin for C, it will kill all the gram-negatives in that culture except Neisseria species. Uh, then the last one, Nestatin. This will eliminate all the fungi in the culture right so uh Neisseria species they commonly uh infect people i mean like recurrently or most frequently right so okay uh let me go again patients with terminal complement deficiency like uh you know this one from c5 to c9 are unable to form membrane attack complexes leading to recurrent infections by Neisseria species right so stay tuned because in the next video we are going to start with Neisseria meningitidis until next time head bound